In this video, we will discuss how to create truth tables given a proposition and identify the types of proposition. In constructing a truth table, the number of rows of the truth table depends on the number of distinct propositional variables of the given proposition. So if the proposition has n distinct propositional variables, then the total number of rows is computed as 2 raised to n. For example, if there are four propositional variables, let's say p, q, r, and s, then the truth table will consist of 16 rows. As the number of propositional variables increase, the number of rows of the truth table exponentially increases. In the previous videos, you have seen that if there are two propositional variables in a proposition, the number of rows of the truth table is 4. Now let us see how many rows would we have if the number of variables is 3. So let's suppose that P is true or P is false. Now each of these will branch out to two additional values for Q. Now for the third variable, each of these four possibilities would again branch out to two additional values for R. Now, to write down the truth values, if we have three variables, we just need to follow the path from this three diagram. So, for example, the first value or the first possibility would be all the three variables are true. This is shown by following the following path. Now, the second one would be true, true, and then false. So, doing for the other possibilities, we complete the eight different possibilities whenever we have three propositional variables. Now, let us illustrate how to construct truth tables from a given proposition. So, first, you need to count the number of distinct variables of the proposition. In this example, we have two distinct variables. Next, we compute the number of rows of the truth table. So in this case, we have 2 square equals 4, and these are the possibilities, which you have seen in the previous videos. And then, we look for the expressions or the propositions inside the innermost grouping symbol, and we evaluate the logical operator in that group. Now, for this particular example, we will evaluate this implication first followed by this disjunction, and then whatever we get from this implication and disjunction shall be used to evaluate the conditional. So to show this, to evaluate this implication here, we copy the values of P and Q in the following columns, and then we evaluate the implication. So the implication will be false whenever the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false. Now, the rest of the possibilities will, will have a true value. Now, for the disjunction here, you need to negate the values of P first, and then we copy the values of Q. So, we get the following values. Now, we use these two columns in order to evaluate the disjunction. Now, recall that for the disjunction, if both propositions are false, the disjunction is false. If there is at least one true, then the disjunction is true. So in this case, we have true, false, true, and true. Now observe that we have two columns that with truth values that are colored blue. Now this blue colored truth values shall be used in order to evaluate the biconditional. Now recall that the biconditional is true if the values of the propositions are the same, while it is false if the values of the propositions are not the same. But comparing row per row, we have the same values for the blue colored columns. 
So thus, the value of the biconditional will be all true. This is the final column of the truth table and we shall serve as the final answer. For this second illustration, since there are two propositional variables, again, there are four rows of the truth table. Now, in this example, we shall evaluate the conjunction first of P and Q. So, copying the values of P and Q and applying the conjunction, we get the following. True, false, false, false. Recall that in conjunction, if there is one false, the value of the conjunction is false. Now, after that, we're going to get the negation of this conjunction P and Q. So we get false true, true, true. Afterwards, we're going to evaluate the conjunction of Q and P. So copying again the values of Q and P and obtaining the conjunction, we get true, false, false, false. Now, using the two columns with truth values colored blue, we shall evaluate the biconditional. Now observe that for each row, the two blue colored values are different. So therefore, the biconditional will be false or all false. For the third illustration, it is left to the viewer to understand how to create the truth table of this proposition. There are three types of propositions, namely tautology, contradiction, and contingency. To determine the type of proposition, you need to create the truth table of a given proposition. A tautology is a propositional form that is true under all circumstances. The proposition in example 9a is an example of a tautology because all the truth values or all the final truth values are true. Now, if in case that all the final truth values in a truth table are all false, then we say that the propositional form is a contradiction. The proposition in example 9b is an example. Now, a propositional form that is neither a tautology nor a contradiction is called a contingency. Now, the proposition in example 9c is one example of a contingency. The rules of replacement show logically equivalent expressions or tautological propositions. When we say tautological propositions, if you create the truth value or truth table of the given rule of replacement, then you will discover that it is a tautology or all the final truth values would be true. So the first one here is idempotence, which states that P is logically equivalent to P or P. So every time you see P, you can always replace it by P or P. Second, we have commutativity. P or Q is equivalent to Q or P. This is quite obvious. So that means if you encounter P or Q, you can always interchange the propositional variables and obtain Q or P. Now the next slides will also contain other rules of replacement, but we will not anymore discuss them further or we will not explain them further. So for the third, fourth, and fifth rules, we have associativity, De Morgan's laws, and distributivity. Also, we have material equivalence, involution, and material implication. 
Next, we have exploitation, absurdity, and you are familiar with this already, contrapositive. We know that the original implication is equivalent to its contrapositive. And we have shown this, we have shown this in previous videos. And finally, we have identities. In the next video, you will learn about arguments and its validity using truth tables.